All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Team Referral Network's monthly webinar series, our Brown Bag Lunch and Learn. Is it lunchtime for you? It is here on the West Coast. Maybe it's cocktail hour or wine time for you or breakfast as well, since we have listeners from all over the world. Our goal on this webinar series is to feature information that busy business people like yourselves need to know to help you succeed. Today's topic is how to keep your business cards out of the trash. That's networking tips and more that we'll be sharing with you today. I don't know if you know how many of your business cards end up in the trash, but let's just take a guess and think it could be a few. Um, our expert today is Corey Newman. And Corey Newman is a veteran of many events and a consummate networker, but I'm, and a personal friend of mine and a business associate. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick little introduction of Corey as we welcome him. Corey Newman is a student of networking and has spent the last 15 years learning the most effective ways to connect business owners to each other. In his profession as a mobile DJ, he has worked with many and referred many in the entertainment related, in entertainment related companies. And he's generated hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of income for himself and other businesses. As a networker, he is committed to helping businesses reach their maximum potential. And now in a new adventure in his life, he is a new agent of Aflac. And he will use his skills to help many more people get the coverage that they need as he continues to be the expert networker that he is. Everybody help me welcome Corey Newman. Yay, <laughs> Corey Newman. Wait, that's Yay, Corey Newman. That's me. Yeah. How you doing, Corey? I am absolutely fantastic. I'm excited. I uh, want to thank you, Kelly and Team Referral Network for having me on this uh, lunch and learn. I have my lunch in front of me and I'm ready to learn and to lunch. So let's, uh, let's do it. All right, but you don't get to lunch. You're the expert. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, I'll eat afterwards. Though. Okay, great. As long as we don't hear any chewing, we're okay. We're All right. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's our title today. Keep your business out of the trash and other networking tips. And, and today, we're really going to focus on something that you're a specialist in, Corey, and that's events. And we know there's many different types of events out there, and there's many different ways to participate in these events. And what I'm really hoping to share with our audience today is just great little pearls of wisdom, little nuggets that they can file away for the next event that they're attending and be successful at it and keep those business cards out of the trash. Sound good? Sounds good. I'm excited. Excellent. So one way to participate in events, and probably the most common way, is as a attendee, right? I mean, you're just going to go, you're going to cruise through the event, you're going to try to glean some good networking, make some connections, uh, maybe you're going to get some information. Um, but we know there's probably a more successful way to do it, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. There is a way to be successful at, at events that you attend. I think one of the things is picking the right event. You know, I, I remember a time when I was um, up north doing a speaking engagement. I met somebody at the event that I was speaking at, and there was like almost 100 people at that particular event, and his business was not connected to anybody at the event itself. He was in the biomedical field, and everybody was a general business owner, you know, small business owner. And I remember thinking, you know, there's a real disconnect to this guy being in here and spending his time, effort, energy, and money to be attending this event when the right people weren't really there for him. So I, I think picking your event, you can be strategic, right? I definitely think so. I think that for me, for instance, as a mobile DJ, my target market are people getting married or are people getting married. So I would spend my time attending events where there were people getting married. They have a name for those and those are called bridal shows. Mm -hmm. I, would pay, I would pay as a, as a, not as an attendee, but as a vendor there. And then I would pay to get to know the people and it paid off very, very well for me. So picking the right kind of event is, is very important for your business. I agree. I think being strategic and then being able to plan accordingly is something that's important. You know, what are your goals that you want to get out of this event? How many connections are you looking for specific connections? You know, these are the things that you need to plan out in advance of attending an event. And I'll even go so far as to say as an event like Team Referral Network's 
annual signature event, which is Teams Big Event. And, and I'm going to use the big event today as kind of the backdrop to all of the different things that we're talking about here on how to be successful and not get your business cards thrown in the trash. So we talked about attending as a, 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 a going as an attendee and you need to work the room, but it's important to recognize um, that you have different ways of being successful at this. One of the ways that you can also network at event is being a vendor, just like you mentioned. Now, I got to think, Corey, that you've done many events where you've been a vendor over the years, and maybe there's a circumstance that you can recall where maybe you were a vendor at the wrong event. Yeah, definitely as a mobile DJ, you want to be in the kinds of events that are going to lead you to meet the right kind of people. And so I went to, as a vendor, I went to a health and uh, training expo, health and <laughs> health <laughs> seminar. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was not the kind of uh, market for me. So definitely choosing the right kind of uh, event to be a vendor at is, is important. As an attendee, it's important too, but if you're paying as a vendor to be at the event, you wanna definitely make sure you're, you're in the right target market. And one, one other thing I wanted to bring up was whenever I go to events, I always have the, the form in my mind. I said form, that's F-O-R-M. So whether I'm attending as a vendor or I'm attending as an attendee, I always think of these four questions when I'm talking. So remember, when you're talking to people, you're talking to people that do the same thing you do, right? They have family, they have occupation. So I always ask four key questions as a vendor and also as attendee. Number one. Okay, okay, great. Okay. I want everybody to be ready with their Write pen and paper. Yeah, Write pen and down. paper. Okay, you number one. Four most effective questions you can ask as a vendor or an attendee. Number one, do you have a family? Are you married? Do you have a, a children, right? People love to talk about themselves. It's their favorite subject. It's making a personal connection, it's definitely. making a personal connection. And what I'm looking for when I'm asking these four specific questions is points of contact, points of similarity. So I have a wife and, and two children. So I like to ask that question to find out how old their kids are, you know, what their wife does, how long they've been married, things like that. So that's question number one. Are you married? Do you have a family? Number two, if it's not already clear, what do you do? What's your occupation? And uh, most people like to talk about their occupation. If they don't, I tell them to quickly find something they do enjoy talking about. <laughs> so if they don't love their job, you can usually tell within five seconds if they love their job or not, because their passion comes through their language. And so I give them an opportunity. Now, this is all them talking to me. I don't answer the, the same questions unless they ask me the question. I like them to talk first. And that's a key thing when it comes to connecting with people. Give them the opportunity to talk. Yeah, when you make it all about them, it makes you memorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they love you for loving them. <laughs> so right. That's great. Number three is recreation. What do you do for fun? On the weekends, in the evening, what do you do? Oh, we like to camp or we, you know, like to, you know, we're very involved in our daughter's soccer, right? And again, I'm looking for points of commonality between myself and them. So if they say my daughter's in soccer, oh, my son plays baseball, you know, in Alhambra where we live. So uh, what do you do for fun? Again, gives people a chance to share uh, their fun things because everyone's doing this business so they can have the income to do whatever they want to do with their life, travel, family, whatever it is, okay? And one of my most uh, favorite questions, number four, and this is form, so we have family, O is occupation, R is recreation, and number three is motivation. So I ask a simple question. If money were no object for you, what would you be doing? And that means if you weren't wor working your job or your business, what would you be doing if you didn't have to worry about money? And most of the time you can get to the root of what people want to do with their life by asking that. And sometimes they'll say, oh, I want to donate more to my church or I want to be involved as a, uh, I want to travel the world. You can really get to the core of what they want to do by asking if money were no object, your, what's your motivation? What would you be doing with your life? And so I like those four questions. It takes about five minutes. I love it. And then repeat them again. F, F is for family. O family. is for occupation. Right. R is for recreation. And M is for motivation. Four simple questions for you to connect very closely. And I guarantee two things will happen. Either one, you'll find someone that you really connect with. You guys do the same thing. You're both into the same thing. And then the conversation is easy because you have the same interest. Or 
you'll find someone you have nothing in common with, right? Someone that <laughs> is completely the opposite. They don't have a family. They don't like their family. They hate their job. <laughs> they do nothing for fun but sit on the couch and they have no motivation. And then you know, should you be spending time with that person as a vendor again or as an attendee? Within five minutes, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're astute enough to know uh, where you should be spending your time. That's great. I like that. I like that a lot. I think that when people are able to make a connection, it does leave you memorable in their mind. And when, when you ask the simple question after you've had a chance to share a little bit about business, you know, and you've made this connection, or you've laughed about the fact that you're completely opposite, but it does break the ice in order for you to do that critical, you know, follow up element to the conversation. And that is, asking permission if it's okay if you contact them. Can, can I reach out to you next week and we can continue this conversation? You know, they're going to be far more inclined to say yes to that when they've made that personal connection with you. So those are some great tips. I love that, Corey. I, I also want to talk about how to be a successful vendor and it has some things to do with logistics as well, like how you display in your booth. You know, we have Teams Big Event coming up October 17th, and it's at the Sheraton Fairplex Conference Center, and we are take over all three ballrooms, collapse the wall, create this very large space, and about one-third of our space is dedicated to Teams Business Expo for the event. And we have, you know, 30, 40 vendors in this event uh, all looking to connect with our 250, 300 attendees that are going to be there. And there's ways to be a more successful vendor at these types of events because you can create interest by your display, right? Tat, what do you do for display for when you're at the bridal fairs and such? Well, obviously you have to know your target market. So in that particular target, when I was an attendee, when I was a vendor at a bridal show, I would definitely cater to the lady. <laughs> right, the brides that are getting married. So we would decorate with uh, lights and we would decorate with flowers and um, we would have a bowl of candy. Now, people love candy. I don't care if you're eight <laughs> or 80. People love candy, right? So you put some mm -hmm. chocolate out there. And again, I stick to the very simple formula. Ask questions about people. Find out what they're into. What are they looking to do? How can you help them? If you are mm -hmm. helping people, you don't have to make any sales whatsoever. People will be calling you if you're Thanks. helping them. If you're selling them, people hate to be sold, but they love to buy. So I would definitely make sure I had a booth that catered to my audience. And in that particular case, it was brides. And then have materials and be able to answer their questions. That's, the, that's some key things when you're, when you're at, at a vendor at a big event. So we've hit on a couple of my um, notes on this. One is how to, you know, do a great display. Do something that's going to attract the people that you want to attract to your booth. The next thing is was how to interact. And you've already shared some great tips on how to interact. And, and for me, I'm always about being permission-based. You know, you know, may I follow up with you? Can we continue the conversation? Ask that critical question. I think one of the, the things that I have on my notes that we haven't touched on yet is how do you collect the lead? right? What's the best way to collect the leads? You want to be able to follow up with these people. Um, so what's the best way to collect leads? Well, when I was doing bridal show, we would offer a, uh, one of my clients has always been Glen Ivy Hot Springs that's here in Southern California. And so Glen Ivy would, uh, as a form of payment to me, give me gift cards. And so I would say to my brides, hey, we have this great uh, spa and uh, we were giving away a $50 gift card. Now, here's the thing. Again, knowing your target audience is important. I was talking mainly to women. If you mm -hmm. offer a spa to a group of men, <laughs> they're not going to be that receptive. <laughs> right? But these women were like, yeah, I know Glenn Ivy. That's a great spa. It's a great place to relax. And so they would gladly give you their information in exchange for being entered into a, a drawing or a raffle. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So again, when you are meeting people and establishing relationships, it's not a weird ask to ask for their information, right? Mm -hmm. you know, right. Obviously, let them know you're not going to sell it. It's just for you to follow up with them. I love your permission-based uh, things, you know, because you have to be, be sure that, that they give you permission. And if they say no, that's okay, too. No, sure. I prefer mm -hmm. you not follow mm -hmm. up with me. That's fine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, so having a, a, a giveaway was always great for me. Yeah. And then yeah. establishing a true person-to-person -person connection, not 
client, potential client to business, but person to person. And then once you get them to like you as a person, then the door is open. And, and uh, I don't ever ask permission to, to be someone's Facebook friend. Okay, I'm a little bit different that way. So if I meet somebody, I go find them on Facebook if I can, and I send them a request. To me, mm -hmm. that's sort of asking their permission. Mm -hmm. And I have somewhere around 3,500 Facebook friends now that I've acquired over the 10 or 12 years of, of being on Facebook, and it's amazing. So give, a giveaway is great, and then obviously establishing a real connection also is very uh, powerful. Yep. And then the last one that I have on my notes is follow up, follow up, follow up. I mean, don't spend the money attending events. Don't spend the money being a vendor at the event. If you haven't already scheduled the time in advance to do the follow up work, that's like the first thing you do once you commit to attending or, or showing at an event is you've got to have that follow up time already booked in your calendar so that you do a a good job of following up. And I, I know you have some thoughts on follow-up. Definitely. I, I, here's the thing. If you're not willing to follow up, like if you know that emotionally in your heart that you're not going to, don't even do the event. It, it'll be a waste of your time. Here's the thing. People want to be pursued, right? Like in the case of maybe if you were single and you were trying to go after someone, this is mainly men, you know, to women. But... <laughs> I just, I'm wondering where you're going here. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> All right, so people like to be pursued. So when you obviously get their permission to follow up and then you do it, it shows you're a person of your word, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So, hey, can I give you a call Tuesday? Or can we meet uh, at a Starbucks on Thursday, right? And then you put it in your calendar and then you follow up with them. And here's the thing. It may not be the first follow-up. You may have to follow up five, six, seven times uh, before you get the meeting that you want or the, the meet or, or the um, appointment that you want. So it, it is probably as important as attending the event. Yep, scheduling, I agree. Scheduling that time, whether it be an email or a Facebook or a phone call or a text or whatever media you decide. Um, following up with each person because you never know. And this is the great thing about networking. You never know what doors are open to you, but you got to do the work. The universe, right? However you view the universe wants you to have what you want, but it also wants you to do the work. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Right? So the work is you got to deal with the emotional, what if they don't like me? What if I'm calling it a bad time and get rid of all those excuses why you're not going to follow up and just follow up. And here's what happens. Fun. You feel better when you follow up. Like you, you really know, do. You feel better, right? If you mm -hmm. sit, sit at that stack of cards of people that you met and you never follow up, that door will always remain closed. Or mm -hmm. you can't wait for them to call you. How often does that happen? Right. Mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if you're the one to follow up, you're already winning because the vast majority of people that bought a booth at whatever you're going to will not follow up. And if I, I'm always up, shocked. I'm always I'm shocked. I'm right. shocked at that. Exactly. That attending the event was it. And mm -hmm. it's not. The real connections, the real business comes when you follow up. It may lead to nothing or it could be the magic thing that makes you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yep. Right? It's so true. Can I tell one quick story? I sure. was called way back in 2000, oh, let's see, when was that? Anyway, a friend of mine called me and said, hey, I'm part of this networking group called Team. We're looking for a DJ, uh, will you come? And I said, yeah, come, right? I'm a DJ, I work like two days a week. We're very lazy people. <laughs> and I showed up and my first meeting, I was fortuitous enough to meet the founder of Team Referral Network. The very Who's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I talked to my business partner and he said, uh, it was, Corey, we lost you. Are we having technical oh, we're having technical difficulties? You just stopped for a second. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Corey? It's always fun when we're doing webinars live um, and you're attending live because we um, all have, can sometimes have trouble with technology. We're on the Zoom platform and it's usually pretty reliable. Um, I happen to know Corey's story, so I'm going to give Corey a chance to get back online with us and see what he needs to do and let you know that when he came to his very first team meeting, it happened to be at a chapter where I was doing a workshop that day. I'm back. Oh, great. Okay. I don't know what happened there, but I have, you know, I was, anyway, I was in the middle of a great story. Right. So, so I joined team and my first year made 
thousands of dollars, right? And they mm -hmm. also followed up with me. And I said, yes, I want to join. And so I joined. And so that's the, that, the, the point of that story was you, you got to do the work. You got to do the stuff, the follow-up, the going to the events, because nothing happens without doing the stuff. Exactly. And it's kind of like we're talking again about Team's Big Event and being a vendor at Team's Big Event. All of our vendors, you know, the part of the uh, tips and information that we give them is to make sure that they're doing the proper follow-up afterwards. And so um, be sure to prep for it, plan for it, and do a good job of it. We're going to move on for time's sake here and talk about what if you go to an event that has speed networking at it. You know, I love speed networking. I've been married too long to have ever gone through speed dating. But what I hear is, is that speed networking is kind of like speed dating. So if you're a veteran at speed dating, you might be really good at speed networking. I'm not sure if the reverse is true <laughs> or not. But um, speed networking, in case you've never attended speed networking, and, and at Teams Big Event, we're doing a historically large speed networking event during the big event. And it's gonna be you know, 300 people who are going to be doing this exercise. So it's crazy, it's, it's pandemonium, but it's actually organized chaos. And Corey, I know you helped us do these speed networking events at our big event. So I'm just gonna tell people our speed networking event is where you have the opportunity to make a lot of connections in a very short, precise period of time. And so we partner everybody up in this gigantic exercise and you end up being partnered up and you're gonna share information, who you are, what you do, what you need next for your business. Then the time will come where the person who you're partnered up with shares who they are, what they do and what they need next for their business. And then there's a brief interlude where you'll have a chance to exchange information and then bam, you move and you go on to the next partner and you repeat. And then you go on to the next partner and you repeat and so on and so on and so on. And so in our speed networking events, it's not unusual to walk away with immediately 40, 50 or so contacts that you've actually had a chance to share your information with. And Corey, you've helped run this event. What's your thought on speed networking? I think that one of the most important things you need to be is prepared, okay? You need to have a lot of business cards with you. And if you yes. get back at home and you think, oh, these 20 should be fine. If you're the person that ran out of cards at an event, like a speed networking event, how are those people ever going to contact you, right? And some people say, well, I'll get everyone's card and I'll contact them. But yeah, people like to get a business card from someone especially. Especially if you've made a connection. And I'm afraid you've glitched out a little bit again there, Corey. I know we did a sound check beforehand and everything was fine. So I'm not sure what's happening there. Um, but it is important to have plenty of business cards. So if you, you're going there, you want to make sure you have those. Are you back with us, Corey? I like the term I help, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I like the term I help. I help businesses. I help families. I help nonprofits, whatever it is. If you're helping someone, again, they like that. So be prepared. Uh, with a, a, a value statement for whoever you're talking to and definitely be prepared when you do speed networking at Teams Big Event with lots and lots and lots of business calls. Yeah, I like to tell people follow directions, which is just notoriously difficult for entrepreneurs. Oh, okay? I hate that. Oh. <laughs> but follow the directions. Okay, so for Teams Big Event and our speed networking event, we have actual instructions and we have, you know, people uh, who are directing you and we have everything organized for you. So, so just follow the directions, stay in the game. You know, it kind of throws things off when people start peeling off and leaving and so we lose a partner and things get a little chaotic in the, in the line and the switching and how we're doing it. So I want to, want to tell people, be prepared to stay in the game the whole entire time. We're not talking a long period of time, 40, 45 minutes for you to make, you know, uh, a few dozen connections is not a lot of time. So stay in the game and, and then come from a space like Corey mentioned, where he said, I help, where you're willing to serve and be sincere about this. Don't, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to sound like a used car salesman. And that's by no way, shape or form meant to be offense to an actual used car salesman. It just happens to be the example that people can relate to. 
I know some great used car salesmen. Um, so be sincere about what it is that you're sharing about your business and what you're looking for. Um, and then also be appropriate in your follow-up here as well, because they've given you, they've exchanged their information with you. And the intent would be that there's a permission to follow up and then the proper and appropriate follow-up would be done um, at a speed networking event. So I, I've been to many speed networking events. I don't think anybody does it better than team. I'm going to brag a little bit, but we, we do a great job and it's giant and huge and fun and you make a lot of connections. So I hope people will come and experience it. Okay, so networking at a conference. Okay, I, I like to compare this to where you really have your similar people, like your tribe can be at most of the conferences um, that you attend. You're connecting at a conference with like-minded people. I know, Corey, you've done many conferences. Is that your opinion as well? Yeah, you're around your people. So when you attend, like in the mobile DJ business, there's a thing called MBA, which is Mobile Business Academy, which really t tells you the finer points of how to book more weddings, how to get more events. And then you're around other like-minded people that are in the same industry as you. And I think it, it's one of the key things to be attending because then you can glean so much from getting the opinions of other people that are in the same industry as you. I think it's a fantastic thing to attend. I do too. And you know what I love about a conference too is just because I'm just a, a child of learning. I love going to conferences. I love hearing the speakers. I always learn something at a conference. I was in Minneapolis speaking at the Digital Summit just last month. And there was some phenomenal speakers there. And at each different little workshop or the main stage uh, presentations was always something that I just learned at. And when you are learning and you're excited and you're meeting these like-minded people, it's a great time to make connections. It's a great time to end up with not having your business cards thrown in the trash, but really making a true connection with somebody who has a shared interest um, with you. And, and something, of course, that can impact your business as well. And, and I'm going to go ahead and draw upon Team's big event. You know, we have phenomenal speakers at this year's event. And uh, we've got um, people talking about how to scale your business, going from uh, being a, maybe even a solopreneur to how to create a business that runs without you, right? We'd all like to have a chance to take a vacation every once in a while. And so scalability is important. We have a speaker talking about how to network like a rock star. Uh, we have a speaker who's talking about sharing your million dollar brand. And then, then our keynote is best selling author, Joel Bauer, who is a marketing guru, the man is a machine, his content is off the charts. Everybody who attends his events just raves about him. And, and that to me is a place where you can go and learn and connect with like-minded people and share your, you know, start building relationships and share your passion for what it is that you do in your business. And I know you're a product of many conferences too, Corey. So your uh, other thoughts on this? Yeah, I just think that Again, preparedness is huge. Um, knowing what you do and being able to, to explain that to people and then being able to listen. So often we believe that people need to hear my message so I have to talk about it. And I'm a big believer in listening first and then responding second. And so uh, at a conference, at a big event, like Team's big event that's coming up next month, very important to be prepared with your message, whatever your message is, because it's important to you, but also be prepared at the beginning to listen to their message and then find, again, those points of commonality. I think you'll, you'll make a lot more friends listening than you will in telling everyone uh, what it is you do. Yep, I agree. I agree. So let's talk a little bit about being to a mixer, because that really is kind of the most common networking events that I think our folks are going out there and attending. And, and what I love about a mixer, and, and I'm going to throw in there that, of course, we do the mixer-like environment at Team's Big Event as well. We kind of take all of these different types of events we've talked about and rolled it into one. But I think the mixing part of it is my absolute favorite 
part of, of networking and getting out there because it's more casual, right? It's a little more relaxed. Uh, you, you have the opportunity to engage in, in kind of meaningful one-on-one -on -one conversations, but then these amazing group conversations start happening that you get to pr participate in as well. And, and I think that those really give you an opportunity to make an impression upon people and have them make an impression upon you and have that exchange of information. And, and when it's meaningful and you have commonality and all the different things that we've talked about, your business card is not going to end up in the trash. Your business card is going to end up on top of their desk, you know, waiting for you to contact them or them go going to be contacting you. Um, so, and I know you love a party, Corey. So what's your tips for being in a mixer? I do love a party and mixers are great because typically, or sometimes there's, alcohol involved, which okay, <laughs> so mm -hmm. be careful with that, obviously, right? But um, mm -hmm. it is a much more relaxed environment. And the whole idea behind mixing and conferences is bringing people together. And I love events. So a mixer is an event, a conference is an event, team's big event, obviously, is our largest event of the year. Really excited about that. So again, it comes down to connection, personal connection. And will you connect with everybody? No, but it's important to be uh, to find your tribe, as Kelly mentioned before, people that are like you. It doesn't have to necessarily be in the same industry as you, but people that have the same goals and uh, that, that also want success. Get them to work the room. Have a five-minute conversation with as many people as you can. Those sometimes will turn into a, a four-minute conversation, right? Or a 20-minute conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and they're equally important. Right? You need to know who is in your tribe and who is not. And so uh, spending the whole mixer time with one person, to me, is not your ideal use of your time. You want to have a, a meaningful five-minute, 10-minute conversation, 15-minute, and say, hey, it was great talking to you. Again, get their permission to follow up. Hey, can I follow up with you? And then move on. Because mixing, like, like anything else, is about meeting uh, as many people as you can and finding where those common connections. And then when you find someone, and you really like them, get their permission, follow up on LinkedIn, follow up on Facebook, send a text message right when you're with them and say, hey, let's have some coffee. And then that is the best use of your time for, uh, for using it at a mixer. I love that you brought up LinkedIn too. So yes, so, and, and obviously, you know, Facebook, whatever social media platforms appropriate for you to follow up in, I think that that's great. I want to touch on a little bit about being at a mixer or even some of the other types of networking that we've already discussed. Uh, about being an introvert and being an extrovert, okay? Um, I've really become more sensitive to the fact that many people, in fact, I would go so far as to say majority of people are introverts. And so some of them find mixing or networking uncomfortable and maybe they, they attempt to do it, which is awesome, but because they haven't fully embraced how to network when they're an introvert or an extrovert, maybe they aren't getting everything they could out of their networking, aren't getting the results that they're looking for. And I just did a, a presentation yesterday, Corey, you know, um, where when I was speaking, um, we were talking about being successful at your networking. And I asked the room, how many of you are introverts? And about 70% of the room raised their hand. How many of you are ex extroverts? The rest of them raised their hands. And so there's different ways to network. And being an introvert, you would want to arrive at an event early. You want to get there before the crowd gets there so that you can get to a place, a position in the room where you feel comfortable. You know, you get to pick your place, so to speak. It gives you an opportunity oftentimes to introduce yourself in a very quiet and more calm environment to the people or the person who's putting on the event. And you can even introduce yourself and, and say, you know, I'm so looking forward to this event and I'm actually looking to meet, and you could go ahead and say actual names of people if you know who's attending, or the type of person that you're looking for. I'm looking to connect with wedding planners and photographers and videographers. It might be in your case, Corey. You know, I'm looking to connect with people who have multiple reps, you know, but you could introduce yourself to the person early on who's running the event, let them know who you're looking for, and don't be surprised when they love being able to bring these people up to you and introduce you to them because that kind of is what they do, right? And so you can plant yourself in a, a spot in the room, 
people can come to you. You do not have to be uncomfortable being out there and trying to network. Uh, conversely, as an extrovert, which is actually more what I am, okay? And me. And you, okay? Um, Stacey O'Byrne describes me as a networker who is an extrovert, but that I love to flutter by everybody. And, and I'll say that she's actually dead on, and I don't know if you identify with this yet, Corey, but one, I love arriving a little late to a full room. Like, I love that. Like, I, I feed off of that energy. The minute I walk through the doors and there's this ton of people there, you know, I sit here and look at this as like, wow, I get to go meet all of these people. And I will literally start flutter buying all the people, having, you know, meaningful couple minute conversations. I usually spend far more time talking about them than ever about myself or team referral network because I love learning about people and I love meeting as many people as possible and where it's appropriate, you know, I always share, you know, gosh, I, you know, I, I'm with Team Referral Network and we help people's businesses grow, but I'd just love to hear more about you. Can we continue this conversation and may I have your card and may I give you mine and all of that permission based stuff. So an introvert and an extrovert are going to network in very different ways. And I really encourage people to find their style and learn how to do it best at these events in order to get the results they're looking for. And one of the things I wanted to bring up is the idea, and I've been sharing this in my networking with uh, the people in my life, is that get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What that means is if something you know in your heart, and I'm a big emotional guy, right? I like, I like to be in tune with my emotions. I'm very self-aware. I know that I can walk into any room ever and be 100% comfortable. It's a function of being a wedding DJ for almost 20 years. You have mm -hmm. 200 people that came to a wedding, now they're at the reception, and they wanna be entertained, and you're the guy, right? And so I got right. very comfortable right away with being the center of attention for these people's weddings because that's what they paid me for. So if you are, and you know you better than I know you, if you're an introvert, get good at being uncomfortable because the more you're uncomfortable put yourself in uncomfortable situations right it's hard it is because we like our little comfort bubble but the more you find yourself at an event at a mixer stepping out of your comfort zone the wider the bigger your comfort bubble becomes and then you'll find at some point that you don't even have a com an uncomfortable bubble anymore right everything's right. uncomfortable but you have to expand it Right. And that's the hard part. No one's going to make you do it. I mean, unless you are with someone that makes you do it, but uh, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable at a mixer at teams, big event to I, I would never do this, but I'm going to do it. That's where the power is and doing the thing. And then you get the power and the uncomfortableness out of the way. I agree. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, on top of that, again, just letting you know that we're doing a mixer element to Teams Big Event. And I saw the question in the chat. We, we, we kick off the event at 11 a.m. like the answer was in the chat on Thursday, October 17th. And I'll talk a little bit about the big event here in just a minute. But I do want to share that we do an after party as well at the big event. And that's some serious mixing okay as well i'd like to say that the best networking sometimes is done in the after party at team referral networks event because we've had as many as uh, you know close to i don't know 75 80 100 people come over we go over to the hotel bar after the event and we get takeover and we hang out and we have a great time for another hour or two while traffic dies down and um, there's some serious relationship building in a good way that's going on there at the after party so i, I encourage people to be um, part of that as well and if you're coming to the big event to allow some time afterwards to come to the after party and, and Corey I know you've been to the after party many many years yeah the after party to me is one of the most you know fun things because it really is just socializing yes and mm -hmm. people do business with people they know like and trust and if they know you well, that's great if they like you it's even better but once the like is built Right, hey, I like that guy, Corey. Or, hey, I like him. Then the trust bridge is, is then built. And they will, tr you know, they will refer you to their friends, their family, their neighbors. But you have to do the work. And so the, the after party with team is one of the most fun events I do all year. I love it because it really is just a mixer. Grab your favorite beverage if you're into uh, drinking a beverage. Or if you're not, that's fine. Grab a, a, some hot wings or whatever and just get to know people. 
And we think that networking is so complicated. It's not. It's just people. It's not. It's yep. just people. Get to know people. Everyone's like, I got to tell these people about my business. They got to hear my message. Listen, get to know people. Once you know them at, personally, they'll listen to your message. But if they don't know you, that's how your cards end up in the trash. Yep, you exactly. You try to the card in their face, thinking that that will lead you to a genuine connection, and it does not. Yep, it's what true. What it really does is liking them, listening to them, hearing their message first. And then if they ask you, hey, so tell me about you, and then you sharing your message, and now you've made a deeper connection that will last way longer than the five minutes that you had there at that mix. Absolutely. It's true. And this last slide is going to talk about follow-up. And we've talked a lot about follow-up already. I know one of your favorite sayings is? The fortune is in the follow-up. <laughs> I knew I could say that. I knew you'd deliver for me. Uh, so show your talent and interest rather than tell. Follow and engage with companies on social media like we've already talked about. Email is fine. It's a nice medium to follow up with. Always make sure they get the email if you don't hear back from them because that happens sometimes. Make sure you practice quality over quantity. Boy, is it far more about that as well. Right, Corey? Yes, definitely. You want to make sure that you're spending the right time with the right Yes, exactly. And Corey just cut out again, but I'm going to move on to our next slide. I, I see you've been asking about the big event itself, and we've shared a lot of information about it. But just so you all know, it is October 17th, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. I always tell people, be sure to stay for the entire time, okay? You can actually go into work for an hour or two, depending on where you're at, get some things done and put away for the day, you'll have Friday, the next day after the event to do any additional work that needs to be done. But gift yourself, your business, okay, the gift of being here and fully engaged in the entire day. Um, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. It is at the Sheraton Fairplex Conference Center, a beautiful state-of-the-art facility on the LA County Fairgrounds in Pomona. It's a Sheraton property. Um, we're actually going to share with you that um, you can have the, for everybody who's listening to this, okay, we are going to still extend the early bird um, pricing to you. So it'd be $79 for members and $89 for non-members. Um, but if you are a non-member listening to this uh, Brown Bag Lunch and Learn webinar, all you need to do is mention it to us, call in or send us an email and we'll give you the $79 member early bird price as well. We'll have world-class speakers, great networking, wonderful exhibitors, mind-blowing opportunities of professional and personal growth. We're going to have um, giveaways. I, I can't tell you what our giveaway is, but it's very, very cool. You want our giveaway. There's lots of wonderful door prizes. I've already shared with you our speakers' topics and what they'll be bringing to the event, plus the speed networking, plus the mixer, plus food. I forgot to talk about the Sheraton Fairplex. Food is five-star. It's just a great, great event, and uh, we'll be capping the day off with uh, Joel Bauer mentoring to millions as well. And Corey, your chance to share a little bit about Affleck here um, as we wrap this up. We've got a few yeah, 30 seconds. Okay, yeah. So I've been a, a professional mobile DJ for 19 years. I've absolutely loved it. Team has been instrumental in helping me make a lot of money. And so I've decided now, you know, the DJ business is a, a young man's game. When I started, I was 23. I'm now 42 years old. And uh, a lot of weekends are involved there. So I decided to get involved with a company uh, that I have done my research on that's a ethical company. Everyone knows the duck. Everyone knows <laughs> Aflac, but very few people know what Aflac is and what it does. And so I'm excited now to share the benefits of Aflac with my friends and my family. That's who I'm going to talk to first. I'm in the middle of that. I'm still going to be a DJ because I absolutely love that business. But uh, my number is there on the screen, 909. 996-7775. I will definitely be at the big event. Uh, I will definitely be staying for the after party after the big event. And uh, if you have questions, please feel free to call or text me. And it's been an absolute pleasure and privilege to be on this, uh, on this brown bag lunch today. I hope I was able to share some things that really uh, helped uh, you and your business. And if you have more questions that have nothing to do with AFLAC or team, please, you have my number right there. Thank you.
And, you know, I failed to mention, of course, but maybe people realize it now already, uh, Corey is going to be the DJ, but not only the DJ, but the MC at Teen's Big Event as well. So can't, can't yeah. wait to spend the day with you, my friend. I'm going to thank you all for your time. It's 1215. It's time to let you go. Um, if you need more information about Team Referral Network, as always, teamreferralnetwork.com. Everybody go out and make it a great, great day. Thank you so much, Corey. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.